Good afternoon, everyone. The time is 515 PM Wednesday, May 12th, 2021. This community action board meeting is being called to order and please be reminded that this meeting is being recorded. As it stands at this moment, we do not have a quorum in the room. So we will just go through the items on the agenda that we can go through. And in the event we get a quorum, we will circle back to the things that needs to be ratified and complete those things. So um, roll call, I will start with the room and go to my right. Uh, Rosa Hill, uh, Community Action Board Chair, representing Tampa Housing Authority. Samelia Davis, representing Eastern Hillsborough County, Billsville, Low Income. Jennifer Anderson, East Hillsborough Advisory Council, Low Income Sector, Plant City. Rhonda Gendelsberger, Feeding Tampa Bay. Marina Hogue, Hillsborough County Public Schools. Noreen Copeland Miller, representing West Central Region Advisory Council, Low Income Sector. Janine Hargert, representing Low Income Sector. Sharon Gordon, Social Services. Good evening, everyone. Derek Guida, Social Services. Sharon or Derek, do you have access to see? The, the who's online? Yes, I can um, do roll call okay. and just, you know, if you're online, please state if you're present and then staff after I finish roll call with the board members, you can introduce yourselves. Osea Wynn. Present. Joey Henderson, he is scheduled to be here. However, he is not here as of yet. So we'll, um, Raymond Wong. Present. Kimberly Mitchell. Harold Jackson. He's running behind, so I'll come back to him. Thomas Mortensen. Mr. William Thomas. He is also planning to attend in person, so we're waiting. Um, Yvette Lewis. Okay. Christine Long. Marcia Sedano. I I am I am in row. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Santos Morales. Good afternoon, everyone. Santos is here. Gabriel Brown. Regina Gambrell. Patrick Simmons. Here. Andrea White. Present. Here for Regina Gambrell and Ralph. Okay. Have I missed anyone? Okay, so staff, if you could please introduce yourselves. Maria Gillis, Social Services. Angela Madero, Social Services. Shelly Hamilton Ray, Social Services. James Gerard, Social Services. Chen Mai, Social Services. Kelly Mistrada, Social Services. And that completes roll call. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we will have now the invocation. Uh, if we could just take a moment of silence uh, and bow our heads. In honor of the invocation, please. Hey, let me, let me put let me put my phone my thing on mute. Hold on. Thank you. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. If those of us are in the room that can stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, 
indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Davis, if you have access to the mission statement, would you please read the mission statement? It's part of the agenda on the back. There you go, see. The Hillsborough County Community Action Board partners with community stakeholders to stabilize and empower vulnerable individuals and families to achieve self-sufficiency -suffic through advocacy and essential services. Thank you. We will move now to the Social Services Manager's Update Report. Mr. Gerard. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is James Gerard with the uh, University Community Resource Center. A um, couple of updates. One is the, the Vital Statistics Office and the WIC Office at the Univers University Community Resource Center is now open. The COVID testing and vaccines have been moved to the University Mall. And UCRC continues to kind of be the headquarter uh, for the Emergency Rental Assistance Program led by Angela and Shin. That's all I have for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Gerard. Uh, Ms. Gordon, Sharon Gordon. Good evening, board members. Uh, all of most of the um, committee board committee members have met this month. As you're aware, a lot of my reporting would be involved in the committee meetings and all the activities that you have going. So if you have anything that you will want to add, um, please let me know and I'll um, be more than happy to provide additional information if needed. Um, our empowerment team, they continue to provide services, even though we're pending contract services are continuing um, with the customers. And that is all that I have to report. Thank you, Ms. Gordon. Ms. Shelley Hamilton, Ray. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are still having testing at um, Lee Davis. CD McGuire is still on site performing the rapid testing Monday through Friday. Uh, mom, excuse me, Monday through Thursday from uh, 8 to 4. Healthy Living has resumed their virtual classes. We do have staff on site at Lee Davis, but all the classes are virtual. So the classes are held Monday through Friday as well. And classes typically go from 10 a.m. to about uh, to about noon every day. Um, myself and, and Ms. Ziegler will be attending a meeting on Friday to discuss possible um, reopening of Lee Davis and, and what that will look like. So I'll be more than happy to um, update this board at our next meeting next month. And that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Hamilton Ray. We just had a board member into the room. If she can introduce herself for the record, please. Yvette Lewis representing the NAACP Hillsborough County branch. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Welcome. Continuing with the center manager reports, um, Mr. Chen Mai. Hello, everyone. Uh, Chen Mai for uh, Plant City and South Shore. Uh, our career source is currently open and taking application for the Summer Connection Program. Uh, Healthy Living has opened their gym for the community uh, at Plant City. WIC and uh, property appraiser is open so they can use their services. And then down in South Shore, we have uh, Florida Home Partnership and Bay Area Legal Service taking the uh, team customers as well. Thank you, Mr. Mari. Ms. Angela Madero. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, just a report on the training and special projects. The, uh, like James mentioned, UCRC is the uh, hub for the R3 ERAP program. We are still providing um, assistance through uh, not only the department staff, but we have temps there operating this program and making sure that the applications are getting reviewed timely. Uh, we also uh, provide additional training and support as needed from the training unit. 
And another project we're working on is uh, the department was working with DEO on a streamlined process for uh, Lockheap apps with the util utility vendors. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Madero. All right, now down to the standing committee reports. Executive committee, uh, myself, Rosa Hill, committee chair. We met on Thursday, May 6th. Uh, we basically talked about the items that needed to be ratified during this meeting. Um, other things that are going to come up in this meeting uh, from different committee members reporting around the scholarships. So I'll leave that to them. Uh, Ms. Gillis um, will be working uh, with Mr. Henderson around um, hybrid versus virtual meetings going forward and what that what that regulation looks like. Um, and there was some discussion around the um, Hillsborough County 2019 needs assessment and it was brought to uh, the boards, the committee chair's attention that that needs assessment is a part of the training for the new board members coming on. So new board members are familiar with what happens or what the community is expecting and the needs in the community in different areas. So um, basically that was it. Um, the other items that were discussed during this meeting will come from the other committee uh, chairs when they make their reports. So next would be the bylaws committee, Mr. Henderson. Mr. Henderson is not in the room. So when he gets here, we will um, come back to him to give his committee report and move right on. Well, Mr. Thomas is not here for the budget and finance committee as well. So we will move to the planning evaluation committee, Ms. Anderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> um, just a couple things. We have uh, the T-Mobile hotspots. Uh, we've been in contact. We uh, have been in contact with Education Foundation about distributing those. We're waiting on a proposal from them uh, to give us the information on distributing the them dis distributing the T-Mobile hotspots. We had not received the proposal. Have we received it yet, Ms. Gordon? No, I have not received anything. Thank you. Okay, and um, we had asked that uh, they be sent a um, advisement that we need that by May 14th. Um, actually, Ms. Christine Long was their point of contact, um, and I've, um, I'm waiting to get, receive a response in regards to this, her conversation with them if they're still interested, so yeah. Okay, and those of you that are on the Planning and Evaluation Committee, it is very important um, that each of you go in and score, get, get, you were sent the proposals and the rubric. Each one of those, uh, I believe there's eight, need to be scored. And you need to score each one of them, all eight of them, not two or three. You need to score all eight of them. So if you're on the Planning and Evaluation Committee, and you haven't done that, it's very, very important that you do that. And you have to do all of them. And we need those done by May 14th, please. Because we do have one uh, proposal that will be providing we have a quorum that we will be voting on because it was actually from last budget year. And um, so we, we had it, it all in order. And tonight we'll ask you, we'll be asking you to vote on it. I believe and to read here so but but the ones that are remaining please if you are on the planning and evaluation committee um please you were sent those proposals and the rubric please get those done and get them in uh to Derek, i believe as soon as possible uh, but no later than the 14th of may which is friday uh, you should have gotten something about that but we do need those in and it is very very important because uh, you know those 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 scores need to be in so we can get a correct um, scoring for each one, and that's all I have. Thank you. 
Thank you. If, um, if anybody has any questions, I didn't do that. I apologize. <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, Madam Chair, if I could ask yes, uh, Ms. Anderson, regarding EPIC, the recommendation, and correct me, did, were you planning to bring the recommendation to the board to um, fund EPIC during this meeting? If there's not a stand, there's not an item on the agenda specific to that. So it's just, I thought we had asked that at the, at the, the exact, I was sitting here reading, looking for it, because I thought we had asked that at the, uh, it it was, go ahead at this meeting and ask for a vote on Epic. Okay. So when the executive at the executive committee meeting or at the, the executive meeting, I thought we, okay, that I, would come be brought today. Um, to be okay. voted on. Okay. And the others wait to be scored on. Okay. All right. Thank I you. I apologize. No, no. Thank you for clarifying. So for clarity for me, if we get a quorum in the room tonight, Ms. Anderson, you'll be making a recommendation that we go ahead and fund Epic. Is that what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. That's what I would like. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you. I, I, I believe they've waited long enough. And they're, they're, Hold up was not something of their doing or our doing. It was Hillsborough County Schools. So I think that they have waited long enough. They had to wait through last budget year and now we're into this budget year. No fault of their own. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I do want to say um and agree with Ms. Allison, the budget and planning committee did ask for it to be on the agenda today so that we could move forward with it. Okay, so that is an oversight on my part, since I do approve the agenda um, for today, but we will make sure that if we get a quorum in the room, that we go ahead and take care of um, getting a vote for that and getting it approved. Thank you. Thank you all. We just had another board member into the room. If you can identify yourself uh, for the record, please. Good afternoon, Kimberly Mitchell, Commissioner Stacy White, Representative. Good afternoon, Joey Henderson, Vice Chair, representing the Honorable Ken Hagen. Thank you. I think we're still one short of a quorum. Yes. Okay. So we we will continue, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, may I ask a question to Ms. Anderson? Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Anderson and and. Uh, Mr. Guida did send out the rubric and all of the expectations to the, to the members. Are you welcoming uh, completed reviews by any of the board members, not just your committee? You know what, Mr. Henderson, <clears throat> with Madam Chair's permission, I would, I think that'd be a good idea because I'm, I'm not getting much permit, uh, uh, cooperation from other committee members. So with Madam Chair's permission and if Ms. Gordon, if that's okay, um, I that would be wonderful because I'm not getting a lot of, so far I don't think we've gotten a whole lot of participation, have we Ms. Gordon? So far we have not received, we've received one. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize, this is not, I'm sorry, go ahead. All right, this is uh, Ray Wong. I, can we comment on how many uh, rubrics you're expecting back? And uh, who are the board members that we are expecting those rubrics, rubrics back from? Give me just one moment, please. Unless Derek knows the answer faster than I do. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ms. Madam, Madam Chair, in all due respect, I you know don't want to risk embarrassing anybody. We know who the committee members are, and it's been sent out. We we have that information already. However, it, if I'm understanding your question, Mr. Wong, you're asking among the board members in general, and that's up to the individual board members, if I am answering your question, if they outside of that committee who may decide to complete the rubrics, if I may suggest that. Yeah, no, that's just, great. I think that's a, a good idea. If, for example, we're expecting a total, this is a hypothetical, if we're expecting a total of five rubrics and there's five board members, but you can potentially have uh, 
three other members that are not in that committee that are willing to to fill the rubric um, and volunteer to do so. I don't necessarily, I, I personally don't see an issue with that and see how that could be very beneficial to getting this done. I mean, ultimately, I think that there's a reason why, uh, you know, if those board members are in those committees, uh, it's it's critical that that get done. And unfortunately, two of us that are on the committee that are willing to do the scoring have had to excuse ourselves because we have conflicts of interest with myself too and Mrs. Gindelsberg one. So we're, we can't score any because it'll throw off the, you know, the about the scoring. So we can't just score six and not the other. I can't score six and not the other two because it doesn't make it fair. And like Ms. Gindelsberg, one of them is Fresh Force with beating Tampa Bay. If she scores one and not the other seven, then there we go again. So there's two of us right there. So we really do need, uh, if people aren't participating, we do need the help. And Ms. Anderson, what, what's your timeline to try to get these in? It was Friday, two days from now. So if I could go back, I just need to make sure, because I was on that call and there was a lot of discussion around the number of rubrics, the number of people making sure that it's fair and it's not, you know, that the scale is balanced. So I would want to go back to staff to say, what are we looking for? If we need three replacements, are we looking for three replacements? Because we don't want, you know, all of the board scoring one or two of the rubrics because that's the ones that they're interested in. We, we need to make sure that per that discussion, that call, that was a very lengthy call that we keep the scale balanced as far as how many people are scoring how many rubrics. So share, I see your hand, Ms. Noreen, but can I have Sharon? Absolutely. And then I'll get back to you, please. So the staff recommendation was the same, the, the committee, the, the, same, the same people to score all of the, the proposals, but you don't have a mixed match of different people scoring proposals just for consistency consistency purposes. Um, I guess we're down to which committee members cannot commit their time to scoring the rubrics because it could be competing with whatever they have going on personally or with their work. So I think that's where we're at. I, um, I think you could wait until after the 14th to see the response and then recircle it again during the executive committee if you permit Ms. Madam Chair or during the next planning and evaluation committee and think of another strategy and maybe having less member score proposals and it'll probably be a lot more manageable that way. Okay, so the question on the table, if mm -hmm. I understand it correctly, if we have say three committee members who know due to their schedule or whatever reason, they cannot you know, score these rubrics within a timely manner that they have three other people on the board or three other board members go ahead and get it done. I think that's the question that's on the table. I know Ms. Noreen, that came up in the meeting, Ms. Noreen, as far as replacements, and there was lengthy discussion around that. Can you um, enlighten us on, on the comments you brought to the meeting around that? Madam Chair, it's um, nine committee members that's part of that planning and budget committee. Two of those had to recuse themselves because of the conflict. So it's seven committee members. And I was sure that the chairperson had asked that we contact all seven, the staff, to let them know that they needed to do the work and get it back. Because those seven people, some of them may not know they're on the committee and signed up and they may have forgotten, gotten busy. I've scored three of mine. I know I have five more to go because I'm on the committee. So it was the seven committee members that are signed up for the committee, which I think is in line with the bylaws. If you're going to be on the committee, you um, let them know. But it's those seven people, all of them may not even be aware what they signed up for because of the pandemic and the different um, things, that, the way we've had to do things a little bit different. So I know that the committee that was at the meeting did recommend we stay with committee members only. Yeah, I, I appreciate you saying that because that's sort of the reason why I was asking who are the committee members because there might be people that 
might not be aware that they're in the committee, might have forgotten that they're in the committee, and you know, it, it might be a good opportunity. I mean, might not have checked their emails recently. It's any number of reasons this could have fallen uh, between the cracks. So uh, that's entirely the point that I was trying to make. So it's my suggestion at this point that we circumvent staff back to those committee members. Um, if we have not already and let them know, remind them that they signed up on the committee and what their responsibilities are and the timeline for getting it done. Uh, uh, highlighting the fact that they need to score all of the rubrics, not just 1 or 2. In order to keep the voting consistent and fair. Okay. So, if we can do that uh, with those committee members this week and set a timeline, you can work with Ms. Anderson, Sharon, if you don't mind, set a timeline that they need to get those done and uh, we move forward. Are there any objections to that, Ms. Noreen? No, uh, Madam Chair, thank you for that. And I just think it's an opportunity now to just call out the committee folks name so that they all know because we have a quorum. Thank you God for that. And <laughs> we're uh, I think it's a good time. I mean, because I know some committees I sign up for, I forget. And I think that you got a lot of participation here. This is opportunity to call out those committee folks name and there's no way to be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed if they call my name. It will be very helpful and a reminder. That's my suggestion. M Madam Chair. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I can agree with what you're saying. Um, Ms. Copeland Miller, thank you for clarifying and thank you, Mr. Wong, for clarifying as well. And I can agree with that. So are we now pivoting back only to committee members? Is that what uh, the stipulation will be? And whatever committee members can commit to providing the rubrics at a different time, not this Friday, correct? Uh, if it's going to be three, if it's going to be two, that's what we go with. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. Madam Chair. Thank you. The, yes, ma'am. Yes, the committee extended through May 14th. So if you want to extend that deadline, um, please please advise and we'll send a notice. Yeah, we'll 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 talk about a, a different timeline and perhaps sending them directly to those committee members stating you are on this committee. We need you to do this in case you were unaware. Um, okay, apparently several board members in the room that don't know which committees that they are on. Do we have access to the committee list? And if we do, can we share with the group who's on what committee? I actually have it. I'm looking for it right now. I apologize. I don't know my heart. Yes, thank you, Derek. Um, he provided the list, so um, I'll just call out the names if that's what you're asking. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, Ms. Jennifer Anderson, Noreen Copeland Miller, Osea Wynn, Dr. Benny Small, Rhonda Gindelsberger, Christine Long, Samelia Davis, Regina Gambrell, and Andrea White. So those are committees for the planning and evaluation committee. Yes. Okay. So um, um, staff, I know that we've done this before, but can we send out the entire uh, committee list, letting everyone know who's on what committee. Um, so we, we will have that information going forward. And as far as the discussion today, I am understanding that we are going to focus on the current committee members. Which is 9 with 2 recusing themselves and asking the other 7 people to score all of the rubrics for the proposals we have on the table. With the deadline being extended, staff is going to work with uh, Madam Chair to come up with a different uh, uh, deadline and we'll let the committee members know via email what that deadline is. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Excuse me, Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Um. Well, first, I'd like to um, introduce myself. Mm -hmm. um, Marcia Sedano, representing League of United Latin American Citizens. Thank you, and I apologize for my tardiness. 
I also, um, I believe I signed up to be part of the planning and evaluation, um, evaluation committee, and I didn't hear my name being called. Uh, we can add you, uh, yeah, but you're not on the list. Um, but you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I thought I sent an email, but I got to see which email I sent out to what committee then. I apologize if it wasn't on the evaluation, but. Is that a volunteer? We are adding you to the list. Yeah, we'll okay. be so you will be, <laughs> you will will be effectively to. added to the list effective tonight. And we had one other board member come in the room. Uh, could you please introduce yourself for the record? Yes, Madam Chair, the William Town City of Plant City. I apologize for the tardiness, but I couldn't bear to have my AC not working tonight. I wouldn't be able to go home and sleep well with my wife. So I had to get that taken care of. So I'm here. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Mr. Wong, did we answer your question? I think yes, you did. Thank you so much. I apologize. I had myself on mute. I have landscaping going on right outside of my room. So thank you. Yes, that was helpful. Okay. All right. So moving right along, we do have a quorum in the room, but we will finish the standing committee reports and then we will revert back to the items that need to be approved and ratified. So we are, we will go back to the bylaws committee. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, Vice Chair, Joey Henderson. Thank you, Madam Chair. The, the bylaws committee did not meet for the month, uh, for the month of May. And uh, we will continue our meetings. And if any of you board members have something that we need to take a closer look at with regards to our bylaws, uh, I would encourage you to just review them on occasion and then let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, budget and finance, Mr. Thomas. Yes, Madam Chair, just to follow up the budget and finance committee meeting, uh, did not host a meeting. Uh, I was unable to fulfill that obligation. However, uh, I know we're trying to uh, set up something immediately after this meeting here to reconvene. I would like to advise the entire board now that we have a quorum that one of the intentional efforts is to look at movement of some of the CARES Act funding to possibly get the board to consider uh, funding one of the programs that the planning committee may submit for your review. Other than that, Madam Chair, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, public information committee, Ms. Sedano. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, public information committee met yesterday. And I am happy to report that we had received 75 applications, scholarship applications. 59 applications are for a 4 year institution and 16 applications for a 2, um, two year institution. As you know, we're still waiting on the, um. Decisions from DEO in terms of, um, what our budget will look like if we get an increase. And um, it's the will of the board that we uh, try to uh, award every everyone with a scholarship. Once we know the decision and we get everything finalized from DEO, which hopefully will be within the next um, month. And we are in, in timeline with um, letting the applicants know if they got awarded, because our timeline is to let, uh, let them know um, by mid-June. So we, um, if we do get that decision within the next couple of weeks, we would uh, come back to you and give you guys a more of a final report as to where we are in terms of um, budget-wise once we hear from DEO. But I am happy because we had the 75 applications. Everybody was uh, did it within the deadline. I know we were a little nervous <laughs> that we wasn't going to reach our goals, which we did. And I thank you to the staff. For um, getting in contact with the students, they still have a couple of days left uh, to just get decisions for um, the school that they got accepted. But other than that, everything else was submitted in time, and they have till May May sixteenth is the deadline for. Uh, we only have eleven kids that just need to report back that they got accepted to the institution. But other than that, everything else was submitted by that deadline, which we had. It was April sixteenth. Okay, thank you. So for clarification, um, and I'm looking back at my uh, executive committee, 
notes. We had actually 84 applications to come in. 75 were approved mm -hmm. 11 pending. Yes, we had 9 that were denied. So, the, um, so we, we had 9 applications that were denied. So 9 of the 84 was denied or 9 of, I mean, 9 of. The overall was denied. Yes. How does that work? Okay, great. so we can all understand how the numbers are broken down. May I, may, yes. Can I add, Mr. Donner? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes. Yeah. So, yes, 75 potential applicants that will be awarded. 11 of those 75 were still waiting for their fall enrollment letters. So, if we, if all of them submit those letters by this Friday, then we'll have 75 applicants that we, we could potentially award. Well, let me take that back. The budget does not allow for the 75, but there will be. That's where I'm trying to get you to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yes, thank yes. you. Okay. So, um, to break this down, because I, I really want the board to understand, because we've always had a lot of discussion around scholarships. We received more applications for scholarships this year than we have money in the line item to award. Okay, so there is potential for several of the students that um, submitted their application not to be awarded scholarships simply because there's not enough money in the line item to award them. So staff put in a first come first serve time dated process. So the 75 students, if they all turn in their paperwork, they were selected based on the time and the date that they returned their applications. So I wanted to be very, very clear for the board. Mm -hmm. we, are not, we are not able to, at this moment, at this moment, we are not able to fund all 84 of the students that submitted applications. Mm -hmm. And we may not be able to fund all, I think, I don't know how many we had, Slated in the budget to fund. We, Madam Chair, if I may, um, yeah, it it was um the budget was for two hundred and thirty seven thousand five hundred, and um one of the things uh, that the co uh, committee discussed is possible um scenario outcomes because we have that disclaimer we have where we could fund up to five thousand dollars and up to twenty five hundred for a two year institution. So if um once we find out what our what the budget looks like, then we'll come back. So if we'd have to um reduce the amount of the max we would like to give the students the maximum amount. But if we had to reduce it, this is something that the committee is, you know, we're waiting on decisions from the EO. Because you know, the will of the council is that we award the whole 75 um applicants. So would that be, you know, if they get four thousand dollars versus five thousand okay, dollars? Madam so Chair, this is Kelly. This is Kelly Mastretta. I just did the math really quickly, and based on the applications that you have, uh, fifty-nine at five thousand and sixteen at twenty-five hundred, you're looking at a total of three hundred and thirty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that that number was out there, so you realize how much over the estimated budget it is. So we're looking at over three hundred thousand dollars, and that's a difference of what from what we have, Kelly. Ninety-six thousand. So that's a difference of ninety-six thousand dollars, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm pulling up what um, Derek has sent out to ratify the estimated budget. Um, that was the two hundred thirty-seven thousand five hundred. Is what he sent out to ratify. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that it was my understanding that. It was going to be based the entire budget on percentages, um, but based on this, you had slated for it to be a set amount of two thirty seven five hundred for the scholarships. If you go back to the, the strictly all percentage base, it would be less than the two hundred thirty seven thousand. It would be. Um, hold on one second. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get it pulled up so I don't give you the wrong information. If you go based on the, the strictly percentage based budget, um, based on the current budget, 
is the total would be 233,432. So not that much less. Okay, and I don't want to move into Mr. Thomas area as for budget and finance, but I did want to bring it to the attention of everyone that we received, we, we rallied for more scholarships. We were asked to rally for more scholarships and we did that for more participants and people turned them in. So now we have more on the table than we have funding for. So I just want to make sure the entire board understood that and when you're out in your community, you know, somebody doesn't get funded, likelihood, um, and, and you have to answer that question. We just, we, we don't have the new budget, I don't think, from DEO, and we're basing on what we budgeted for, and we have more than what we budgeted for. So just want to make that clear um, to everyone. Okay. And Ms. Sedano, I guess, you know, we'll hear more about reducing the amount because that was not discussed in the executive meeting. Uh, so I'm not familiar with reducing the amount of the scholarship. So um, that's, that's new to me. So I guess we can discuss that when we get down a little bit further on the agenda, Sharon, unless you want to add some insight now. Yeah, it, during the, um, uh, Ms. Adano, if you don't mind, if I add, um, during the discussion, we were identifying some options um, to present to mm -hmm. the board. Um, if it was, if, if you, if the committee wanted to recommend funding all of the applicants, then we'd have to reduce the amount because it is up to $5,000. So there's no guarantee that it will be $5,000 for a four year, 2,500 for a two year. So that was more of a recommendation and option. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was the recommendation to be brought to this meeting or for or up for further discussion for further discussion. Further discussion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I just want to be clear. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to overstep anybody. I just no. we just, Madam chair. We just wanted to make sure we uh, reviewed all the options because the will of the uh, council is that we want to make sure that we award the scholarships for everyone. So we were trying to, we as the committee was just trying to find different ways on how we can award everyone with a scholarship based on, you know, the overall, um, the wonderful response that we got with the scholarships and make sure that, you know, everyone gets funded. Madam Chair, if I may. Yes, ma'am. Uh, at the executive committee meeting, what, and I need you to help me with this because I recall staff saying, that we were not going to have enough money to fund everybody. So it's going to be first come, first serve basis because we had budget a certain amount of money. And that was the recommendation at that meeting. Yes, ma'am. That was the recommendation at that meeting. That's why I was trying to get clarification on the statement that we would reduce the amount because apparently that happened, that discussion happened after the executive committee meeting. And it's my understanding it's up for discussion. Is it up for discussion among the committee or is it up for discussion in this board meeting? The decision as it stands based on board vote is first come first serve. That's the decision. However, during the committee, you know, I guess wanting to fund, I guess wanting to fund all the applicants, that was, that was a, that was a discussion. And so as staff, we were like, well, you know, here are the options, but as it is, Per board, board vote, staff is acting on first come, first serve, unless we're directed otherwise by the board. The is one of the options, one of the other options, for example, to reduce a number of applicants or scholarships so that they do get the full amount. I personally, um, I personally don't know that I support that. If that doesn't necessarily make sense to me, because it sounds like in a previous meeting, as a group, we decided that we wanted to increase the number. If the application states clearly that it's up to an amount of $5,000, I would say that that's pretty clear to me that the $5,000 aren't guaranteed. So I, I'm not entirely sure what issue we're having here. I, I don't know that it says anywhere that it guarantees $5,000. If I may know, it does not. It just says up to. Now, one of the things that the board did vote on is the amount of scholarships. So it was 25 scholarships for students going into a five-year institution. My sorry, my apologies. 35 for a, a four-year institution and 25. That's what was, and then first come, first serve. Because we voted not to have a Rubik scoring. So instead we went with mm -hmm. first come um first um, first serve. 
but we did, um, and the scholarship was always, it has always been up to $5,000 for a four-year institution and up to $2,500 for a two-year institution. But what was voted on was the um, number of scholarships. Okay, and I don't that number that. that number again is what? Which number? Which number are you asking, sir? The total number, the total number that was voted on that we agreed on was did you say 75? No. 35 60 for right, okay. four year institution and 25 for two year institution. Which is based on the amount that was um, awarded last year, because last um, last fiscal year, our amount was uh, was smaller, and then we had extra money, so we able, we were able to um, award everyone scholarship, and we added to, um, we added some more to the budget. We added some more funds to the budget to be able to award everyone. So what we did this year was to match the same amount of scholarships that were awarded for last fiscal year. So here's where we are. Okay. This there was discussion in the executive staff meeting Which I about I'm sorry, about um awarding a five thousand dollar and a twenty five hundred dollar scholarship. So today um the the uh, scholarship committee met after the executive meeting and tossed around ideas about reducing the dollar amount because it says up to a certain amount. In order for us to move uh, at a reduced amount, then we have to have an agreement of the board to do a reduced amount. Has a reduced amount been determined on per the number of scholarships? If we reduce the amount, do we still get to serve all of the students? So there are several questions on the table for me that still needs to be answered before we have a lengthy discussion around reducing the amount. So is there any comments from any of the board members? I, I personally see there only being two questions. Either the board agrees that we're going to have 60 at a higher amount or the 75 currently under consideration for the lesser amount. Madam Chair, this is uh, Kelly Mistrada. I would just want to remind you that when you're voting on numbers, you need to be very cautious because we do not have next year's budget. This right. year's what was decided on was on an estimated budget, and if it comes back and they reduce a bus budget like they have done historically, your overall budget would be approximately 10% less. So I just okay. want to, to caution you that if you set a number in stone that would um, could negatively have, uh, impact your other programs also. So when is it that we need to have a decision made in order to issue the scholarships? Typically mid June, we notify the applicants whether they were awarded or not. So, but do you notify them how much they receive, or just whether they were awarded? We we how much they were received. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. mid June. Mm -hmm. So that's mid June. So we have time to hash this out, and and, and like Kelly said, we don't know how much money we're going to get, um, in the budget, whether it's going to be reduced or not. Yeah. So I would like to see the committee come back to the table with more defined detail as far as the dollar amount, answering the two questions on the table, and then the, the board can go from there. Does and that make sense? And Madam Chair, may I add yeah. um, exactly what Ms. Mistretto was saying, really until we actually get a budget amount from DEO, the contract amount, it would be very hard to finalize a decision based on that missing information. No, just not knowing what numbers we're working with. Yeah, Madam Chair, yeah. Just uh, if I may, and Ms. Gordon, you said that uh, the students are notified in, uh, in mid June. Okay, so with that in mind, we're new mid June is next month. And to have the committee go back to come back with solutions, uh, you know, I guess later June would be okay too, but you know, it's just a matter of all that timing there is gonna be bumping up against one another. But we are not at a point tonight where we can vote to say, reduce the amount. We, we're not at a point where we can say how much each person get um, 
because we don't know how much money we have. Mm -hmm. So if we vote to reduce the amount, in my opinion, we're voting kind of blind um, you know, because we don't have any details. Madam Chair, I agree with you 100%, but I don't think we've even um, gotten to that point to decide if we're going to reduce it. Uh, have we decided that that's, we were trying to fund more of the students? I know in the committee we talked about it, but I think that's the first thing we need to address. Are we going to try to fund all of them or go back to what was, as Ms. Copeland Miller had mentioned initially, is it first come, first serve? And we I just agree. And, and that's what I just asked because the the conversation around reducing the amount happened after the executive committee meeting. Right. So the majority of us don't didn't know that until just now. So um and I asked are we are we are we looking to do that or are we looking to stay where we are? Um because tonight is the first time we've heard it. Um uh, and I'm not comfortable with just making a decision off the whim for questions I may have to answer out in the public and we haven't, you know, come to a complete agreement as a board on how we're going to do this. Yes. Did the committee, did the committee make a recommendation which way to go on this? Uh, Mr. Because Wong, if you, Mr. Wong, if you would, please uh, wait to be recognized by the chair. Uh, we had somebody that was being recognized here. I know you all can't uh, see yeah. us. Um, Ms. Copeland Miller. Madam Chair, in my opinion, I think that what we budget for the 60 student to be safe because we know that that's what the entire board, board voted to support. I think that's at this point where we, that's what I would stay with because we know that part of it is the entire board voted to fund 60 scholarships. And we do have a, that over that amount, but that's why they said first come, first serve. The 60 that we budgeted for, I think it's a safe place for me. Okay. Thank um, you. So before we move on, Ms. Sedano, uh, Mr. Henderson, did you have your hand up after Ms. Copeland Miller before I move to Mr. Wong? Yes, I did. And, and I just will agree with Ms. Uh, Copeland Miller's assessment. That's after rethinking it and everything, we need to be cautious. Mr. Wong, you have the floor. I apologize. I apologize. Thank you. I, again, I, I, I honestly it might just be me that I'm getting hung up on this, but I, I really do see there only being two questions and I'm sort of like counting on, I think in general, I'm sort of looking at each committee for their re recommendation. I, for example, uh, I, I mean, that's why we have the committees so that they can come to these meetings with uh, these recommendations prepared that we can move on and, and vote on. So the question is, uh, again, I, I see there being really two questions, a higher number of students at a, at a lesser amount or a lower number of students at sort of the full amount with the understanding that that full amount might actually end up still being not the $5,000 based on the fact that historically the budgets are, are cut so is this the appropriate setting to uh, make a vote on on where we stand as a group? Uh, again, more students with a lesser uh, uh, amount of money or or less students with a higher amount of money. I, I don't know that this is the right setting. I'm sort of asking what the process is for deciding on, on that because I think that that's the first question. So uh, I recognize Mr. Thomas's hand, but I want to make this statement. Uh, Mr. Wong, there wasn't a recommendation made to reduce the amount. There was a statement made right. that it was discussed in the committee chair's meeting. So that's what I picked up on, that there was a discussion mm -hmm. and there was no recommendation brought to the board to around this topic of reducing the amount. Okay, so I wanted to clarify that. Okay. Um, Mr. Thomas. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, and listening to everyone, I kind of, kind of, uh, some chance to agree with all the concerns. Uh, if, if I may, uh, Ms. Sedano, who's the committee chair, is there a possibility of one? Obviously, we're 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 dealing with the challenge of not knowing what the budget amount is going to be. 
coming through. So that's obviously a challenge that is beyond our control. However, I, I think uh, due to the, uh, the, the CAD board's uh, interest today, uh, I have full faith and confidence. Uh, Ms. Sedano, do you, do you believe that maybe the uh, committee can convene or meet uh, shortly thereafter this meeting uh, the next week to come up with some recommendations again in time for the June uh, CAD board meeting? The only challenge with that, and we can meet, the only challenge is that we're not, it goes back to what is the amount? What is what is the budget amount? Because we're waiting on DEO to come back with a decision. So even if we toss up different um, options to come back with the board until we're not sure of the amount. And I also want to go back to um, the 60 um, application. Everything. It is not 60 application per se. Um, as I first started, we have 59 applications for students that are, want to attend a four-year institution, which puts it at 295,000. Right there, it's over. So that, so that, that's 24 app, uh, scholarships over the original amount that we voted on. And then for we have 16 applications for students that are attending a two-year institution, which puts it under the uh, budgeted amount by nine so it is we do have to go back and look at these figures because when we're looking at it is overall we're looking at five thousand dollars versus twenty five hundred so it's not sixty students receiving or sixty applications receiving five thousand dollars we already all with the time stamp of the ones that already first come first serve it was fifty nine applications just just for the Five-year, um, excuse me, four-year institution, which brought it to two hundred and ninety-five thousand. Thank you, Mr. Donald. And again, I just want to read to the entire CAD board that uh, it's 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 uh, we shouldn't be too too pressed with just with the understanding that look, the budget is not in yet. I think that's something we shouldn't really be. Um, uh, and in the short term, it's not our fault. So again, I, th I think the the board just do the yeah. best we can we in our scenario. We've been waiting, and we didn't we didn't want to have this lengthy discussion because it seems like there's a lot of stuff that's missing. And until we're not sure as to what we're doing, what the budget looks like, we we can only toss out different um, recommendations or different um responses with the with the council. But I am um willing to just put in a meeting as soon as um there's any word the council is probably willing to meet because we want to try to get this resolved and come back to the board with giving you guys a final recommendation as to what we could do to best, best serve the students anyone else madam chair i just wanted to um I guess put this information out with regards to financial aid for the universities that these students may be attending. There's a deadline on which they have to have certain information submitted. So if they don't have the the total number of their funding, they may or may not be able to apply for other scholarships and opportunities. I was just putting that out there. So that's something we have to be cautious of because they do fast for the that application if it's that they're all going to state universities. They do that at the very at the very beginning of the year. They get their award letters before they get out of high school. And so if they're going into um, like the summer program, they're going to need that money sooner rather than later because the summer programs usually start in May. Okay, so like Mr. Thomas stated, we are at a at a at somewhat of a loss because we don't know how much money is going to be in the pot. Um. And we have a vote on the table. We identified 60 students to receive scholarships, whether they're $5,000 or $2,500. I understand the concern to reduce the amount to serve more people. But in order to do this in a timely fashion where kids, students do not miss out on other opportunities, what does that look like for us right now? So that is the question on the table. We set in place and we voted that we would have a first come first serve tracking um, mechanism in place just in case we got to these positions where we had to deny some people we had solid backup to back us up if we were questioned so is this board looking to change that process that is the question on the table 
That's the question I need answered. Are you guys looking to change the process tonight that we had in place? Madam Chair. Oh, Ms. Anderson. In my opinion, the the committee sat down and they came up with a certain amount of four year scholarships, a certain amount of two year scholarships, and a timeline. And the board voted on it. They agreed on it, and we need to stick to it. If a, a student is expected, if they're awarded a five thousand dollars scholarship or a twenty five hundred dollars scholarship, that's what they should receive. That, in my opinion, is what we set in set in stone. And it's first come first serve. That's why we should leave it. That's just my opinion. Anyone else? Uh, I agree one hundred percent. Yes, Madam Chair, William Thomas as well. I, I agree. Uh, I do do ask that the, whoever decides to put a motion forward, if the CAD board feels in the interest to do it tonight, uh, that we understand that uh, my understanding is this 35 was approved for 5,000, 25 was approved for the two year, uh, 35 for the for the four year. And I've, according, I believe the numbers are 16 were uh, uh, or recognized for a two year and 55 were recognized for four years. So, uh, just understand, I'm sure the numbers will be uh, uh, updated or ma managed a little bit because obviously the two year did not hit the 25 uh, unit threshold. That's all I have to offer, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I agree with uh, my colleagues here on that as well. The question I have is uh, to staff is that if we fall uh, short as far as the uh, two year uh, colleges and I guess uh, training centers I, that includes that right as well. Um, will it be a problem for us to redirect the remaining dollars to the four year overflow that we have and and parcel out that funding to them? Well, is that, is that going to take an act of the state of Florida for us to do something like that? <clears throat> I guess I'm trying to understand the question. <laughs> well, the question yeah. is if we're if we're short in one area, if we if we have uh, access in one area, how hard is it move is to move to the to the other area to make sure that those additional people get funded? Thank you. Okay, um, Madam Chair, I'm sorry, Sharon. Do you want me to answer? Yes, because I, I was about to defer to you. Yes. Okay. Um, I while you were talking, I was just doing the math. So based on 16. Um, Scholarships at 2,500 that equals 40,000. So you would have 22,500 dollars remaining out of the. Um, the identified or the the earmarked. You know, uh, 2,500 dollars scholarships. So if you divide out the 22,500, that of course is not equal into 5,000, but you would be able to uh, an award an additional. 4, th 4 scholarships. That would come to 20,000. So we have not submitted the budget to the state yet because we do not have the budget to submit. So it would not be an act of the state or anything like that. If you decided that you wanted to um, reallocate that 22,500 towards the five year scholarship, I'm sorry, the four year scholarships, you could do that. We would just have to change the number awarded. Thank you, Ms. Mastrada. That answers my question. And, and I say that in terms of uh, going through the state of, cause I know it seems like if we have to sneeze, we have to go to DEO for it. But, but definitely when it's dealing with the money, I know sometimes we have to uh, submit those changes to DEO, but that's good to know that we don't have to do that in the, in the, in the situation with regards to our scholarships. Yeah, um, under normal circumstances, we would like last year when we uh, move money into scholarships, we did have to submit a modification, but at this point, there is no approved budget by the DEO, so it would just be part of the initial budget when submitted to the state. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Copeland. Yeah, Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion that we um, go with the six scholarships that the board voted on, and that's the motion I make, and understanding that we had budgeted for those 60 scholarships at the board. That's my motion. I like to second that motion, Madam Chair, if accepted, with the following comment that just noting for the record, we have not received as of this date 
We have not received the budget allocation from DEO. Ms. Gordon, for yes. order. Yeah, I know you're in the middle of a motion, but I just wanted the, the board kept directing towards 35, 35 awarded to four year and 25 awarded to two year. So is the expectation is, is uh, first come first serve based on the first 35 of the four year and the first 25 of the two year, or is it just the pool in general? Madam Chair, because then it it won't necessarily be exact to the budget. If Mr. Thomas, Madam Chair, Chair, if I can kind of help out, of uh, hopefully my uh, my college math professor might be a little happy if I can uh, articulate this a little bit. To my understanding, we approved thirty five for four year and twenty five for the two year. Right now, we have sixteen that were units that came in for two year, and fifty five for the four year. Uh, Ms. Kelly Mastrada noted we could fund an additional four, based on the numbers she had crunched, additional four five-year, four-year uh, scholarship recipients. That I believe that number would make a 16 for two year and 29 for the four year, if I'm correct on my math. Uh, Ms. Mastrada? Mr. Thomas, it's 59, 59, not 55. 55, okay, 59. Thank you. So I'm looking at 16 for the uh, two year. And 29 for the four year. It would be 39 for the four year, Mr. Thomas. For the four year, 39. Okay. So the question on the table from staff is on the first come, first serve, is that first come, first serve in the category of 2,500 and 5,000, or is that first come, first serve for the entire amount of students that apply? Madam Chair, I think you have a motion on the floor. Yes. It's being motion and second. And we have discussion. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, so. In point of inquiry, if I'm using that correctly, Madam Chair, do we need to vote on something that's already been voted on? Uh, I don't, you know, that's kind of doing double duty. And I don't have my Robert's rules in front of me, but we had already made a decision. And now we're going to make a de decision on the decision. To continue forward, Mr. Parliamentary. <laughs> yes, uh, we we I, I think the, the point of order or point of query. Uh, at this point, we voted for a, a certain number. Uh, that number has been exceeded. I think to, if we're going to be judicially responsible, we need to uh, go back and vote to affirm the change of the numbers uh, from a funding standpoint. Uh, change to validate the change of the numbers because originally, okay, Bobby. We, yes, Mr. Wong. Okay, so I think that yes, it is appropriate judicially from a financial standpoint to uh, again have a motion to affirm the changes in the numbers because obviously, again, uh, I keep you know reiterating that we haven't gotten our funding uh, allocation yet. So, uh, again, I think this board has a responsibility to make sure if we're going to change it. Because we are changing the numbers. We set an expectation. We exceeded that expectation. And we do need to uh, ratify what came in and what we what we like to move forward on. Thank you, sir. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Um, point of order with regards to the motion that's on the floor. You have a motion that was presented and seconded. If you are not going to actually entertain that motion, she will need to withdraw the motion. Mm -hmm. So that way we are um, with with regards to parliamentary procedure, we are in order. Um, and if the number that we voted on is still within whatever, how the, the committee breaks it down, we're still where we're supposed to be. We've got, um, we've got more than the number that we have. They have the committee, from what I understand, our committee responsibility, the committee will just break, do the breakdown and present that information to us. With regards to just the number of 60 that we voted on. So we voted on a number. Well, there's a there's a motion on the on the floor. So where are we going with the motion? Are we still it's at motion the point and of discussion? Second. It's in motion and second and up for discussion. So I think that all in favor. Are, and they... So are we finished with discussion? I am, Madam Chair. So it has been motion and second that we. I don't forgot the motion. 
it's motion. It's motion and second that we maintain the 60 we originally voted on with the understanding that we are adding that we have the potential to add to the number based and all of this is based on the amount of funding that we get from DEO. If I stated that correctly, all in favor? Um, Madam Chair? Yes, ma'am. Um, with regards to making motion, the person that makes the motion has to make the explanation. You just repeat what they say. Um, with regards to explaining it, that's when you do the pose a question or clarification of the motion from the person that made the motion. Yes, ma'am. Can you repeat that? I question? made the motion that we budgeted for 60 scholarships, that we stay within that budget because that's what the board voted on 60 scholarships. And I think that Mr. Thomas. Uh, made uh, when he second the motion, uh, add some additional information to it. But my original motion was to say 60 scholarships that we voted for, but it was some additional things came with that second. So, Mr. Thomas, if you would, yes, Madam Chair, my motion again was and my comment again was noting for the record that we have not received the budget allocation as of this date. That was all. So it's been motion that we stay as a board, we stay with the original 60 that we originally voted on. And it was second contingent upon the fact that we keep in mind that we were adding a possible four more scholarships based on DEO funding. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye. Aye opposed. For the record, one opposed? Yes. Okay. So moved. The ayes have it. All right, so moving on on the agenda. Uh, nomination and membership committee. Ms. Copeland Miller. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, at this time, I do have to say this. This has really been concerning to me. I'm so glad that we have a quorum here. And I know that staff, I was not expecting this many folks, but when the board members come, and I do want to apologize to Ms. White, and she's sitting on the wall, but I know it's always standard for board members to be at the table. I know I don't have a problem with her sitting here. I've been vaccinated. He has, she has. But the bottom line is, I'm so grateful this many people thought enough to come out. I encourage staff to make sure that they're at the table so they feel a part of this. Now, this lady is from my advisory council, and I'm feeling some kind of way. I asked her to come up to the table. Of course, Benny being the gentleman he is, he wanted to jump up. But the staff has that responsibility to make sure that the board members are accommodated. And that's my point. And I do appreciate Derek immediately yielding his seat. So before you move on, Ms. Copeland Miller, from where I can where I can see, both Derek and Sharon offered up their seat, and they were and Sharon was turned down. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, this, at this time, I'm going to ask Ms. White if she would pull up to the table because this is her first board meeting, and she certainly is a part of this. And when we come in, and then you're not even in the loop, then it's, that's not a good experience. Thank you. And that just was a concern of mine. And probably nobody else concerned but the appearance. And I think that it's important when you're part of it that you be in that circle of energy so that it does circumvent around the room. So thank you, Ms. White, for coming. And I do apologize for you sitting on the wall as long as you did. I'm going to move on to the nominating and membership committee uh, report. We met on April, on March, the, oh Lord, excuse me. We met May the 3rd. Uh, Monday, May the 3rd, and, uh, and I'm going to ask Derek if he would share that. Um, can you share that slate that we came up with there? From the final, the one. I can, I do not, I'm not joined in where I can scare, uh, share the screen, screen. Yeah. 
Okay, you did mail it out in the uh, electronic mail. So I was just thinking it might be better. I mean, if it's easier, Derek, that me that I log in and share it, I can. For the um, for the time that I'm going to move on, and why, if you can pull it up, fine. If not, it was an electronic file that everybody received. And at this time, the uh, nominating committee wanted to present this slate to the board and uh, so that we could vote uh, and be in compliance in June. So if Madam Chair would allow me, I would read off the names and if there's any nominations from the floor at this time. The first person we have on for board chair, Madam Chair is Joy Henderson. Is there any nominations from the floor for the chair? One time, is there any nomination from the floor? Two times, is there any nomination from the floor? Three times. Thank you, Derek. Um, it's on the board. For those of you who can't pull up your file, the uh, ballot is on the board. So I've went three times for the chair and there's no other uh, names on it. So, uh, can I get someone to close on the chair being to move on with this slate? Okay, I'm gonna move on to the vice chair. Would you? First, we have one of the vice chair, Harold Jackson, Joy Henderson, and Christine Long. Is there any nominations from the floor? Are there any nominations from the floor? Did you cut it on? Oh, okay. For the vice chair, a nomination from the floor. I nominate William Thomas. Okay. William Thomas has been nominated from the floor for the vice chair to be added to the list. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Okay, up next we move on to the secretary. So, Melia Davis is on for the secretary. Are there any nominations from the floor? Are there any nominations from the floor two times? Any nominations from the floor three? Thank you. I'm going to move on to the parliamentarian. We have Harold Jackson, Santos Morales and William Thomas. Are there any nominations from the floor? I, know, uh, I nominated Santos. Santos Morales is on the list. His name is there. Okay, are there any nominations from the floor? I nominate Janine Hargrave. Okay, Janine Hargrave has been nominated for the parliamentarian. Okay. Madam Chair, having gone over the um, ballot or the slate that the nominating committee came up with, I would like to present this to the board with the added names of, for the vice chair of William Thomas and the adding name of Ms. Hagrid for the parliamentarian, along with the folks on the list. And I would like to present this late at this time to the board so that we can um, get it moving, approved. So that's my report. I'd like to present this as a motion to the board. So you have to make a formal motion. I make a motion that we uh, vote on the presented slate with the added names as presented to the board tonight. Second. It's been motion and second that the slate um, as presented with the right ends of William Thomas for vice chair and um, Janine Hargrid for parliamentarian um, be accepted. All in favor? Aye. 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 
So moved. Okay, Madam Chair, and part of the discussion for the committee is when we vote next month for um, the the people on the slate there, would you um, talk a little bit about that process that we did last year that, I, or Ms. Gordon, would you, we did discuss Ms. Gordon. that. Okay, Ms. Gordon, if you would share that with the board, please. Yes, I will. I will admit I will have to do a little more research now that we're in hybrid meeting, but last year, because we were full virtual, it was a voice vote. So everyone during the meeting um, stated who they wanted for a specific um, officer position and whoever received the most votes won, won the slot. So I, it would be the same in this setting. Um, we're just meeting a little differently, but it would be the same. So you're saying that um, when we do the voting process, each person has to verbally state. They have to verbally state okay. who they want for that. Yes. Thank you, mm -hmm. Madam um, Chair. That is my report. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Noreen Copeland Miller, and and also thank you for the additional board members that came in the room. We do have a quorum, so we can. Um, revert back to item D, the approval of the 2021 agenda, approval of the February and March 21 minute summaries. Can I get a motion from the floor? Madam Chair, I move that the minute summaries be accepted. Madam Chair, I second. It's been motion and second that the April 2021 agenda, the approval of February and March 21 um, minutes sur uh, summary be approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Now we are down to um, item G, executive committee votes to ratify. January cab minute summary where we added the seat of Harold Jackson to the minutes. Madam Chair, I motion that we approve January cab meeting minute summary noting the seating of Harold Jackson. I second, I second the motion. <laughs> it's been motion and second that uh, that we uh, approve January cab meeting summary with the addition of Mr. Harold Jackson being added to the move, uh, to the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. So moved. February 10 cab agenda. Madam Chair, our motion that we approve the February 10th cab agenda as submitted. Madam Chair, our second. This is motion and second that we approve February 10th cab agenda. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. The seating of Tom Martinson from the city of Temple Terrace to the board. Madam Chair, our motion that we uh, seat Thomas Morrison from the uh, city of Temple Ter Terrace to the board. Second. Okay, it's been motion and second of approval of the seat of Tom Martinson from um, city of Temple Terrace to be added to the board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. So moved. CSBG FY 2021 budget. If there's any discussion around that, if you have any questions, I'll, I will acquiesce down back to um, Mr. Thomas. But um, at this point, can we get a motion to approve the FY 2021 budget? Madam Chair, this is William Thomas, City Plant City. I make a motion we approve the FY 2021 budget noted as proposed for approval. I second. second. This motion and second that we that we approve the CB, CSBG FY 21 budget as noted. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? CSBG FY 2020 budget modification. Madam Chair, this is William Thomas, City Plant City. 
uh, unless the, uh, any of the board members would like to get detailed information on the, uh, the how the remaining funds were modified and allocated, I would then uh, put a motion on the floor. Uh, if not, the motion can fail and we can get an explanation from Kelly Mistrada. Second the motion. You, you have the motion on the floor, Mr. Thomas. Madam Chair, yes, uh, my motion is to approve. Uh, during the discussion, the motion can be uh, debated and, uh, and pulled back or repealed. If the CAD board members are in attendance would like further explanation on how the modification closing out the 2020, 2020 budget year was done. I second the motion. It's been motion and second that the CSBG FY 2020 budget modification be approved. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? CAB scholarship deadline extension April 16, 2021. Madam Chair, I um, make a motion to accept the uh, extension deadline of April 16th for the CAP scholarship deadline. Second the motion. It's been motion and second to accept the extension of the CAP scholarship deadline to April 16th, 2021. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Cab member um, biography highlights. Miss Ocia Wynn. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. You have the floor. Okay, so um, if you, I'm traveling, and if you can't hear me, if I get noisy, just let me know. But yes, I'm Ocia Wynn. Um, I'm an administrator for the city of Tampa. Um, uh, the mayor's appointment to the CAP committee. Uh, I've been with the city for 15 and a half, going on 16 years. Uh, prior to working for the city of Tampa, I worked for a subcontractor for the Department of Defense. In my previous life, before serving, um, I served in a, a work in a capacity of, of an engineer. My trade, my background is electrical engineering. Um, I have two children, young adults. Um, one is has just recently graduated from Florida a &M University and is Thank in you. at the University of Florida uh, doing cancer research, getting ready to start our PhD. And my son is at Berkeley College of Music in Boston. Uh, in my capacity as administrator, uh, I am over the neighborhood and community affairs. So everything that's forward facing to the community, parks and recreation, code enforcement, neighborhood affairs, community partnerships, uh, minority business affairs, anything that deals directly with the, with, the, with the public other than police and fire falls under my area of responsibility. And uh, that's, uh, I guess, me in a nutshell. And I'm um, here to entertain any questions if anyone has them. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Um, Ms. Wynn, uh, are you musically inclined as well? Are you right brain, left brain as well? No, sir, I'm not. Hey, I tell people my children play music. I pay music. <laughs> <laughs> pay a lot for lessons and all of that. Uh, my uh, daughter was in the Marching 100 uh, at FAMU, and uh, my son Caleb was actually the drum major for three years at Blake High School. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wynn. And on behalf of this board, we want to say thank you. Uh, welcome. We're happy that you uh, thought it not robbery to spend your time, to volunteer your time to serve the community as a part of this board. Thank you so much. And I just want to say the only reason I'm not there is that I had a death in my family. So I'm on my way uh, home now to the funeral. So thank you so much for accommodating all of us who cannot attend in person, who, who can only attend virtually. Yes, ma'am, please accept our condolences for you and your family. Thank you. 
Yes. And be careful. Uh, Mr. Santos Morales. Yep, I'm right here. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Madam Chair. So my name is Santos Morales, and I've been on this board for a, a year now. Um, it's been an honor so far to meet uh, most of you and to serve uh, the county and its citizens as part of this board. Uh, I work full time at Enterprise in Latinas in Waimama as the director of economic prosperity. My work at Enterprise in Latinas is twofold. Uh, the first part of my work involves engaging and supporting individuals to create pathways of opportunities through workforce training and entrepreneurship development. And the second part of my work involves engaging community and its stakeholders to ensure the individuals that we're working with have a vibrant community that offers those opportunities for employment, housing, transportation, access to the internet and enterprise development. Uh, I love my job. Anybody that knows me uh, and has been to the organization knows that. Uh, I love working at Enterprise in Latinas. Uh, on a personal note, I am Puerto Rican. I have an accent. Uh, I'm a transport from New York City, where I lived for more than 25 years. Uh, there, I worked uh, for nearly uh, 18 years in community and economic development with uh, several nonprofits. Uh, also, on a personal note, um, one of 10 children. Uh, I also have two adult children of my own living here in Tampa. It's the reason why I moved uh, to the area. And I have five beautiful grandchildren. Uh, and one more thing, if you're ever in the South Shore area, particularly in Waimama, please stop by the office so we can have a cup of coffee and I'll show you around. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Santos. And also, yes, you've been on this board for over a year. I've learned a lot just having you on this board about the South County area. Uh, thank you for volunteering your time to service the residents of Hillsborough County. Madam Chair, if I may yes, say, sir. if I may, um, I, I met uh, Mr. Santos when he first came to the South Shore area uh, to work with Enterprise in Latina. Uh, he is uh, a, a, a recruit of mine that I reached out to, and he has been doing a phenomenal job in the South Shore area and became known quite quickly in all that he does in terms of community outreach. And again, thanks for serving there, uh, Mr. Santos. Thank you, Joey. Thanks so much. Okay, so we finally got to item I, the highlight of the night. <laughs> the Department of Social Services update. Ms. Ms. Ziegler, are you on the line? Um, Madam Chair, this is Kelly Mistrada. I believe that Ms. Ziegler, I'm notified at the executive you meeting that she would not be attending tonight. And I'm also speaking on behalf of uh, Ms. Gillis. She's having computer issues, so she is on the line listening, but unfortunately she's unable to speak while they're trying to uh, replace her computer. So I, I don't have any updates for her, but I just wanted to let you know that's why she's not speaking. Thank you, and you are correct. Ms. Ms. Ziegler did send an email stating that she will be out of town visiting family and not be able to attend the meeting. Um, Ms. Gordon, do you have anything you wanna add? No, I don't, I don't have anything unless you have any questions for me. Okay, so we are down to the good of the order. And the floor is open. Do, does anyone have anything they would like to add? State? Madam Chair, this is William Thomas, City of Clinton City. Just wanted to note, uh, and I'm sure all the board members here in the room, I'm familiar with most, do it. Continue to advocate for your communities. Uh, you know, community, continue to advocate for those in the legislation serving in, as uh, elected officials. Uh, I had a, a, a privilege of attending a uh, networking event this morning with the Chamber of Plant City and and ran into a, a, a person seeking to be a successor to a commissioner, Stacy White, who was, uh, you know, is, is definitely uh, tried to keep uh, the reaches of uh, the universe in Beesville on the radar. So, again, uh, just want to remind the board members that there's nothing wrong with advocating uh, with your elected officials on your causes in your community. That's all I have. Mr. Thomas, do you also share about um, Emancipation Day? Uh, yes, thank you, Ms. Day. Actually, I was going to throw that back at you, Ms. Davis. You the you the you the Beesville person out there. I just scream and holler about Beesville. Uh, but yes, Ms. Davis. Yes, we are. Um, 
uh, we are working with the community of Beesville. I represent the Bing Rooming House African American Museum, and I'm also voluntold to serve uh, with the Glover School Historic Site as well. Uh, the legislation just passed uh, this year a, uh, uh, an order regarding recognizing May Day, May 20th, as Florida Emancipation Day. Uh, that is the day that General McCook arrived in Tallahassee and the city, uh, state of Florida surrendered. Uh, it is uh, 30 days prior to the Juneteenth celebration, which is noted in the Recognized in Texas. Uh, but again, we're always about striving to do uh, make sure history is correct. We will be hosting a ceremony from 5 to 6 at Glover School uh, on May 20th in recognition of that, uh, that uh, historic event. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Just one thing I wanted to circle back to the Florida Association of Community Action Conference is next week. And uh, we have several people signed up um, to attend that conference. So we just want to remind everybody that is Monday, um, I think through Wednesday of next week, the 17th and the 18th. The 17th or the 18th. So Monday and Tuesday of next week. And we are expecting to have a summary uh, back presented to the board. Send it to Derek once the conference is over. Okay, there are two more conferences on the on the um, agenda. So, if you're interested with um, the chair's approval, but send uh, um, send those to Derek and let him know whether you're interested or not. And that is all I have. If I, I'm I'm not good at seeing the little hands on the screen, so I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody that may have raised their hand virtually to speak. If not, and no more from the floor, it is 6.51 p.m. and this meeting is adjourned.